This is a video blog, or vlog for short, a personal entry into a video diary. Watching this video in reference brings a multitude of feelings no other video can accomplish. Somehow I miss a simpler time that I never experienced, and somehow I miss friends that I never had. It's just a guy with his camera in 7-Eleven, but it's so compelling to watch because of that raw human connection. France? Is that where you're from? No, yeah. No, we don't have 7-Eleven. We have some other... You have 7-Eleven, right? <laughs> I'm sure the word vlog has been tainted in your mind with exaggerated personalities exuding fake excitement and positivity. I definitely don't blame you for perceiving the word vlog like that. So many scandals and so much terrible, 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 terrible content. Some of the most popular creators on YouTube are vloggers, and some of the most popular creators on YouTube are idiots, but every genre has its special people. And I'm not here to beat a dead horse. I'm here to appreciate the art of the vlog. Scattered across the internet, various vlog-like videos from the 1980s and 90s can be viewed whether it's Nelson Sullivan stopping at a McDonald's in 1989 or the last day of school at Stoneman High in 1990. Each of these videos encapsulate an important time and were the first step in vlogging. It's definitely weird stumbling across a different time that's not reenacted in Felmer music. It's just raw footage from a completely different reality. The year is 2000. The first X-Men movie is released, and Blink-182 are at their peak, but more importantly... Entry number one, 8.18 p.m., January 2nd, 2000. Springfield, Missouri, we finally made it. <laughs> Oof, we're giggling right now at the weather report. Oh, how it gets nothing but rain and snow, and once we hit Oklahoma about an hour, we are home free. What a first 12 hours. So many things going through my mind right now. Let me first tell you all the little things. Jess's car only goes 60 miles per hour with the trailer. Son of a bitch, nothing cool about that. It's really great seeing 70 signs going 10 miles under the limit. <laughs> to tell you the truth though, it's kinda nice. It wasn't cop watching the whole way, everything was perfect. The weather is amazing. A little rain in Indiana and then nothing but dry roads and 65 degrees. Couldn't believe it. We're in St. Louis in January and it's like LA in March. But that's the good news. We're getting roughly 150 miles on $20 of gas per car. My car gets a little better gas mileage, but it's still insane. 150 miles to go through a whole tank? It's seriously killing our estimates of cost. Luckily, we got to fill up for $1.07 in Cuba, Missouri. That fill up is a bit cheaper. Either way, it's pretty sickening to swipe your goddamn credit card every two and a half hours. Couldn't even get to Indianapolis on our first tank. Son of a bitch. And j Dog, Poor j Dog. We gave him a cat tranquilizer, redundant thing, and it just didn't help. He cried for three hours, finally was cool and slept, but it was as if his curiosity kept getting the best of him and he had to stay awake. He's now chilling at the hotel room, which is completely illegal. <laughs> no pets allowed. Yeah, we smuggled him in. It was awesome though. Felt all undercover. I guess those are the little things. The big things have all been mental. It's much more overwhelming than I thought it would be. It still feels like we're on vacation, but then it hits you that, well, you're simply driving home. It's eerie. I also keep getting visions of my dad standing at the driveway taking pictures as we drove off. It's such an incredible memory. I was fine until he was out of sight, and then I immediately took his perspective. Watching your son drive off to the other side of the country to pursue his dream really hit me hard. Every son tries so hard to live up to his father's expectations, and since we're both in the music field, it's compounded that much more. For the first time, I feel I'm living up to it, and I feel a proudness of accomplishing something huge. This is the hard part. I know I'm going to make everything fall into place when I get there. It's the leaving, the uprooting, the doing. I've accomplished all that, and my dad knows it. Hell, he knows more than I do, but it's a pretty amazing feeling. I'll be very excited to have a child later. <laughs> so there you go. I feel like I should write so much more since I freaking lugged this computer and monitor into the hotel. This is not a laptop. 
Then again, it is worth it. There's something about seeing your desktop in a strange place that makes you immediately feel at home. God love the 21st century. Again, feel free to reply with any thoughts that pop into mind. I'll be saving everything. Oh, and here's some compressed footage of us smuggling j Dog into the hotel. Hope you enjoy. Adam, Jessica, and Marty Moose. And of course, j Dog. That was Adam Contras, a man who claims to be the first vlogger. The man who combined a blog with a short video, hence the term vlog. The man that still vlogs today, even though no one watches him or seems to care. The man who started a genre that would take control of the internet in a few years. When YouTube opened its doors to uploading in April of 2005, almost every video was a short vlog. Sharing your daily thoughts or a raw video of your friends screwing up became a standard for content on YouTube. Grabbing your camera and pointing at yourself became the most accessible form of content for creators and consumers, and it's safe to say that hasn't changed much. But for vlogs themselves, they definitely have advanced a few light years. Vloggers have always had a presence on YouTube. Different eras have had different prominent vloggers, because as you know, creators come and go. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. On another note, some individuals have started their extremely successful careers by vlogging in the early 2000s. Bo Burnham, Jax Films, Soella, Tyler the Creator, and many more. Vlogging has become an outlet to create content that's entertaining, but also a realistic portrayal of life's ups and downs. An escape for reality for many viewers by peeking in on someone else's life. Almost like you have a friend, as sad as that may seem. So on another note, where's vlogging now? Well, currently, kind of a rough spot. That's not to say there aren't good vlogs. I see vlogs split up into three categories. Cinematic, comedy, and lifestyle. Often these aspects will overlap in vlogs, but it's not hard to see where creators land on the spectrum. When I say cinematic, I'm referring to creators that do montages like this, or focus on cinematography and editing as a priority. I think the YouTuber that best represents this content is obvious, Casey Neistat. He has always produced videos of an extremely high quality and has a personality that doesn't get old. When I mention comedy, I'm talking about vloggers who will plan their videos in advance with some skits and gags, channels that overall focus on being funny. My choice for this category is gonna have to go to David Dobrik. His content is full of constant banter and jokes from some of the most charismatic people on the internet. As for lifestyle, this could mean many different things. Travel, everyday activities, special events, the list goes on. I could choose Charles Trippy for his consistency in uploading every day for almost 10 years. I could choose Sam Calder for making some amazing travel videos. I could choose Adam Contras for inventing the internet vlog. There is just so many great creators with such admirable stories. I know vlogs get a bad rap, but there is true art in this content. Anyone, literally anyone, could pick up their phone or talk into a webcam. People don't just watch vlogs for entertainment. They watch them to have a friend and experience someone else's life. I know people aren't a fan of clickbait, but at the end of the day, it's the human connection that brings in the views. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment something, subscribe, Put on the notifications, please. I have a Patreon if you want to support. It's there. These are the supporters. And I'd like to give a big thanks to Jay Schlatt for lending his time and his voice to this video. He makes truly amazing content. <laughs>